Hello everyone. In this chapter, I'm going to talk about voting. Uh, almost all democratic countries elect their politicians through uh, voting, right? The people, uh, the voters, uh, actually select uh, one or some of the uh, candidates through some rule, some voting rule. Um, and so in this chapter, we are going to talk about some uh, highly used in reality and well-known voting rules. And then I'm going to talk about some axioms. These are properties that a good voting rule should satisfy or we expect them to satisfy. And then I'll give you some theorems. Basically, it tells us what rules satisfy what properties. And then finally, I'm going to talk about strategic voting. So up until this point, I mean in the first three uh, uh, main part of this uh, chapter, we are going to assume that the voters uh, do not strategically uh, declare their preferences over the alternatives, over the candidates. They just declare it truthfully. All right, so there's no strategic interaction there. Uh, however, obviously, in reality, uh, most of the voters do not truthfully reveal their preferences. I mean, in, in, in many uh, uh, scenarios and situations, we know that a lot of voters actually do not vote for their first candidate, but rather vote for their second, maybe third candidate, because they know that their first candidate is not going to win the election. All right, so there is always a strategic uh, you know, part of voting. And so we are going to talk about what rules are actually not manipulable. And in fact, we are going to define what we mean by manipulability. All right, well, First thing first, uh, we're going to talk about some voting rules. Um, although I'm going to give you the uh, a, a more general framework, the sort of in, in a, I'm not going to give you the, the the formal definitions of each rules. Rather, I'm going to give you an informal description of those rules, and I'll I'll give you some examples to just show how we calculate the outcome. Uh, for any given uh, profile. But let me first give you a basic setup, all right? Again, I will later uh, uh, describe the full setup and the full model in much more detail. Uh, but for at, at least the uh, when we talk about the rules, I will keep using the same environment. So the environment is as follows. So think of set of alternatives, X, all right? Uh, so there is some alternatives, some candidates uh, that the voters are supposed to choose, okay? Well, how many voters do we have? So X basically denotes the set of alternatives. And again, for simplicity, for my examples, I'm going to assume that there are four candidates. And then we have some individuals. It really doesn't matter, but what I need is that the, the, the number of individuals, voters, is greater than or equal to two, right? I mean, if there's only one individual, it's not really an interesting problem. Uh, just choose, uh, you know, the whatever this agent prefers if there's only one agent. So the things get more interesting if we have two or more individuals. Well, what else? Well, we assume that each individual has some preferences, all right, uh, over the set of alternatives, okay? So this basically denotes the preference relation. However, for simplicity, I'm going to assume that the preference relation is uh, uh, strict, all right? So agents actually prefer, strictly prefer one alternative over another alternative. Uh, they are never indifferent, all right? So we assume that this preference relation, well, it's a preference relation, which means it's a binary relation, uh, which is complete, transitive, and as I said, it's strict, anti-symmetric, all right? So one uh, sort of uh, scenario is uh, agent one prefers A to B, B to C, and then C to D. Agent two prefers uh, B to A, and then A to C, and then C to T, and then uh, uh, voter three, and let's suppose we have only three voters. Well, for my other examples, I'm going to vary the number of voters. Uh, well, uh, she prefers D to uh, C, and then C to A, and then A to B, for example. All right, so if I have three players, well, this basically gives me a, 
uh, preference uh, profile, okay? So I'm going to denote it by this. So this, so let's write it. So this is the preference profile, all right? Well, the preference profile is basically what each agent, uh, I mean, how each agent rank the alternatives. Well, you may wonder, is like why we care about the agent's preferences over all alternatives. Nevertheless, in many votings, you just go and vote uh, for one candidate only, right? I mean, if it is, for example, you know, which political party you want to win the election, well, there are you know, a bunch of parties, and then you go and vote only for one. Right? Well, that's true. But the thing is, we look at the voting, there are a bunch of different voting rules, all right? And so we are going to look at the voting rules where uh, the rule actually not only cares about the best alternative, but also cares about the second best, third best, and, and, and so on. So therefore, uh, suppose that we ask each agent, each voter, how they rank the alternatives, and they truthfully tell us their preferences. Again, I am going to talk about strategic voting towards the end of this chapter, but uh, for now, we are going to assume that each voter is going to vote truthfully. So agent one believes that A is the best candidate, B is the second best candidate, and so C and then D. Right? However, uh, two has a different opinion, and so she ranks agent B or you know, candidate B over candidate A, and then C and then D. All right? Uh, well, then we are going to look at some rules. I'm going to denote them as F. So the F basically is a voting rule. And the voting rule is going to map each profile, a preference profile, to some outcome. All right. So give me your preference profile. And then the voting rule is going to choose one alternative, at least one alternative uh, from this set X. All right. And so it is going to be a subset of X. Uh, you'll see some of the voting rules uh, always gives us a unique outcome. Some of them sometimes gives us, uh, you know, a non-unique, you know, multiple outcomes. Um, and so the voting rule is very simple, it's just a function, which basically it's kind of a machine. It takes uh, the voters' preferences as an input and then gives an output and the outcome is just one of the alternatives. All right, so that's our very simple setup. And now let's talk about some voting rules and see how they react in different circumstances.